Now we heard from the events TV class earlier when they came in talking about their fundraising. They also have been quite busy making short documentaries. As part of the team, they were to produce a three-minute documentary on the team of lifelong learning and the LCFE experience for College Awareness Week, which most of you know is going on at this very moment. Here to talk with us about these documentaries and what's involved, here is Megan Cleary. Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you, it's good to be here. Welcome to the show again, Megan. Uh, so, why is your class doing these documentaries? Um, well, it's kind of like a promotion video for LCFE. As you said, it's for like learning for life. So the documentaries are for that to show the three amazing past and current students we have here and their amazing stories. But also, I think because we're doing 15 minute documentaries, we're doing three of them in the new year that this documentary now is kind of a lead up to that to get us to all work in Mm -hmm. teams and to kind of experience what we are going to be experiencing in the new year so that if there's any problems now, we'll be better to kind of fix them in the new year. And so like we'll have, we'll be better at time management, managing and stuff. Yeah. Uh, where were these documentaries filmed and like who was involved in making them? <clears throat> um, well, I think most of them were kind of filmed around LCFE because mm. LCFE was the main kind of focus. But also um, because we did the documentaries were like sequences. So we had a voiceover and then we had like f- it was all visual. So um, it depended on which uh, it depended on like the person in the video. So say for one of them, my group, we had um, Lorraine Cleary. She's a former student. So we had like cutaways of her work in it and stuff. But we had her, because um, she's an artist, we had footage down at the art gallery and we had footage of her walking there and just around LCF and walking into the gates. And another guy, Chris Behan, he's a current student now. His would have been around where he lives and him coming out of the train station and again walking into LCFE. So the main kind of focus would have been LCFE in, in the classrooms and coming into the gates and walking out of the gates. Yeah. Mm, sounds good. How do you think these documentaries help the students of LCFE? Um, I think just by seeing what they could achieve. So for one of them we had, as I said, a former student, Lorraine Cleary, and she had a kind of tough story and she eventually came to LCFE in 2009 when she would have been in her early 40s. So Mm. she was a mature student. But now after coming to LCFE, it really helped her get her career because she's gone on to the art college and she got a first class honours and then she went to do a master's in media in UL and she's just finished that now with a master's in art. And then also Chris Behan, he's a current student now, but I think he had a rough time coming and in, going into mm. education and he's a mature student and he's come to LCV and he loves it he's getting on great and then Mariam she's an international student so I think it was difficult for her coming from Spain to here and you know like meeting new friends and having to kind of get new interests and like yeah. getting totally aware of a new place so I think you know of course like people who are from different countries and come to learn in another country I think they'll be inspired by Miriam's story and then people will be inspired by Chris's and Lorraine's as well so I think it'll just help them and of course in the students of LCFE these videos are promoting their college Yeah. so it's good Right for someone like myself now I don't know the whole aspects of like you know doing the video (coughs) recording it but editing so like what steps did you do like from start to finish making these documentaries like you know like you had to get your video equipment you had to edit them all that stuff what went actually what actually went into it so i was producer on lorraine's story so for that from the start it kind of was like um you had to book the equipment and just we we all sat down each team and we had to brainstorm who we were going to interview first Mm. and then we'd book the equipment but we had to book the dates um, we had to talk to the interviewees to see when they were going to be available. And so after booking the equipment then and researching and kind of planning out, you had to plan it step by step, literally exactly know what you were going to shoot. And in the brief, it wanted us to um, be very visual and just wanted the voiceover. But I think each group did an interview anyway, just to have we um, set it up as if we were going to use that footage just as a backup. Yeah. And so we did the interview first 
And then I think after that, um, after we planned each sequence as we needed, we just went and I don't think we used sound equipment. Most groups didn't for that. They just got the camera and just filmed their interviewee for all the sequences they needed. And the editor, so Sarah was editor on my group. So each editor just sat down and I think they nearly had a week to edit the whole thing and just bringing it together. And then they had a few drafts of edit because Mern would look at it and Mark did. And um, it all just kind of came together then. Sounds like it's a good team. Yeah. So uh, Sean, Sean McLeod would love it for team leadership. Then. <laughs> um, so are these finished? They are mostly finished now. I th- I know one group is definitely finished. And then I think the other two groups, they were finished. But after getting feedback, I think they're just fixing like colour correction. Mm. So mostly finished, yeah. I think they're going up on the YouTube channel today. Oh, so is it just the YouTube channel or are they going up anywhere like the VLE? You know? Well, first, the, if they can go on the VLE, yeah, we'll put them on anything. They both look, they all look great. So we'll put them on the YouTube channel and also then after YouTube channel, we'll put it on Facebook. And if Chris, Lorraine and Marin, Miriam have um, websites there, can put it on that. We're, I think we're all pretty proud of these mini documentaries. So... We're happy to put it up on anything for yeah. people to see. Then also, I guess uh, all of you are going to be also sharing them on your Facebook. So yeah, definitely. You know, we everyone want, everyone gets yeah. to see them. Yeah, the, the three of stories are great. We have Lorraine's story, Chris's story, and Miriam's story. So we all want people to see what mm, they've they, accomplished. They do. They sound very interesting. So yeah. I urge anyone listening to check them out. Um, so now that you're sort of in the end process now of this, um, what have you learned from the whole experience, and what's next for your class? Do you know, like what's coming up in the next few weeks, few months? I have learned that LCFE is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, the three students LCFE honestly it has really helped them like mm. I know from Lorraine's story it it really did help her it, uh, because she's a former student as well we can see what she went on to accomplish and then Miriam's story she's pretty happy in here in LCFE I think she found it hard at first moving but she is um, there is a few Spanish people she's met in the college and I think she's helping out with intercultural day so it's nice they have that in LCFE and I think a lot of people can relate to Chris's story. So, um, yeah, we just um, just the whole process of the mini documentaries. I think they really have helped us to knowing what we can do in the big fifteen minute documentaries in the new year, and just what we have to do, and maybe how we can time manage it more. Mm. So. Megan, thank you for coming in. It's been an absolute pleasure. And for everyone, make sure you check out those documentaries when they go up on YouTube. Uh, Thank you. Thank you.